What's up everyone and welcome back. For today's video I'm going to work on this. It's a keys and sunglasses organizer. It's a perfect gift idea for anybody that has well keys and sunglasses. And we're going to do it all out of this. Yep, just a piece of pine to make that. So let's get to it. So the first thing I want to do is chop off what I need for this project. Although this board is in pretty good shape for being a 1x8, being that it's a 1x8, it's bound to have a little bit of a cup and a little bit of a crown in it. So I'm going to hurry up and mill that out of it before we get started. Because I'm going to go with a miter joint here and that will mess up a miter joint in a hurry. I like to cut my 45s on a table saw. The miter saw is okay for this. I just find the table saw is slightly cleaner of a cut. So I tend to favor it. Alright, so since I didn't do any design work beforehand, I'm literally designing this at the saw. So I got about five inches of earpiece. I figure probably four and three quarters to five and a half is probably the normal earpiece length. So I want that, I want the face to, not the face, but the uh, back of the front piece to be about two and a half inches from the wall, which will put you about right here. And then the face of it will be almost three quarters of an inch thick, which put you right there. So that puts you about two and a quarter inches worth of glasses sticking out. Then we'll have dowel rods sticking out of it that'll, that the glasses will sit on like that. And they'll stick out probably three and a half inches. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. So basically the way I cut this up is pretty much the easiest way to cut it up. I cut the 45s on the ends, then I went and lopped off the ends to become the pieces that go from the face to the wall. And then I took that piece back to the table saw and I went and cut 45s in the ends again. And that's how I made my cuts. This, however, does not line up the grain. So if you want your grain to line up, this is not the way to cut it. So I measured out where the uh, hole should go for my ear pieces to go into the holes and where the hole should go for the nose piece to sit on top of that dowel. And then I lined up my glasses and realized I didn't like how it looked. So then I ended up having to take the eraser to it. And then I started that process all over again. But basically each pair of glasses was designated about three inches of room with the ear pieces favoring the top of that room. And then the hole that gets the dowel rod that holds the nose piece is about a half inch lower than what the ear holes are. And then it's time to start drilling some holes. I went with some half inch holes for the ears here. Which, not every pair of glasses are built the same way. Some ear pieces may be bigger than others, so keep that in mind if you're making this project. Then for the nose pieces, I'm going with a 3 quarter inch dowel, so for the hole, you guessed it, I'm going with a 3 quarter inch hole. Unfortunately, I did end up with some tear out on about half of those holes, so I had to go over to the planer to get that all dressed up and prettied up. Alright, so I ran it through the planer to fix all of my tear out, and my tear out pretty much looks good but I created this issue with my joint so I need to somehow get this the same thickness as this but I can't run this through the planer because it's too small so I'm gonna have to use the drum sander without the drum sander I would just use my orbital sander and just sand it down on one side until I thinned it out with some aggressive grit but uh, yeah that's where I'm at And that looks much, much better. And at this point, I'm going to get as much of the sanding done as I can because right now would be the easiest time to get all that sanded before I go putting everything together. After everything's all together, then I got everything to work around to get it sanded. So it's better to do it now. Then I'll do some last minute eye glassing up before I go nailing down the measurement of my dowel rods. In hindsight, I probably should have installed the zero clearance fence on this miter saw before I did this. Because these, these dowel rods being as short as they are, they do have the tendency to end up getting kicked out of there. Uh, so a zero clearance fence in this case would have made that safer. We're also using a cross cut sled on a table saw. But at the minimum, do what I did here and keep the blade down until it stops before you raise that blade back up past that loose piece. 
But yeah, zero clearance fence or a crosscut sled would be best. Then it was time to glue them dowel rods in there. So what I did was I lubed up those holes really good with some glue. And then I just pounded the dowel rod in there. Of course you want to make sure you don't get any of the glue on the face around the dowel rod. Because that dowel rod creates a really tight space in there. And if you don't get that cleaned out, it's going to show up in your stain or your finishing process. Then I just used wood glue on the mitered corners and then used painter's tape to hold it all together while it dried out. Alright, so we're all dried up and ready to pull the tape off. Um, these miter joints, I'm not going to let them be just miter joints by themselves. So I'm going to add some strength to them by adding dowels through the corners. And I'm going to use this to do it. It's a, uh, it's a corner doweling jig. I think that's what they call it. But yeah, let's get to it. But basically this jig, it comes with multiple attachments. It has different size of holes you can put in it. And it comes through here and out into this block of wood that I installed on the back here. Because you want it to go into a block of wood once it exits the piece that you're working with. That way you don't end up with a bunch of blowout. Um, but yeah, this thing works pretty good. I ended up with some really smooth holes on these corners. Then I will fill them up with a dowel. And that's just strengthen up my miter joint pretty, pretty well. So then at this point, we just load those holes up with some glue and then insert the dowel rods. Now you'll notice that I put a piece of wood underneath the face and that's because while doing this process I didn't want to put any extra stress on the joint itself. So I put that piece of wood there so that that piece of wood is what would see all the stresses from tapping it with this uh, persuader a couple dozen times. So then I surrounded them with some painter's tape, lopped them off, and then went right back into finishing the sanding process that I started earlier. And when it's all said and done, this is how that joint looks. Looks pretty darn good, I think. Alright, I think I have a good plan for hanging this thing. What I'm going to do... So I'm going to take my keyhole slot jig here, I'm going to mount it under here, and I'm going to screw that in there so that it can't move. I have this clamped down so it's not going anywhere. And then I'm going to bring my keyhole slot uh, bit down slightly in there, just about halfway through the material. should put a nice little lip in there, be able to put like a screw head in there that's hanging into the wall, and it should hang pretty good like that. I've never done this like this before, so say a prayer for me, I guess. <laughs> As always, when you're doing something awkward, take your time, make sure you think this out, double check everything, change into your safety glasses, and, uh, and if you put a bunch of careful thought into it, hopefully everything will go smoothly. But yeah, to, uh, to do that, I had to put this on the bottom of my workbench, and uh, I ended up having to take a sander and sand the bottom of my workbench because somebody's been putting glue on the bottom of my workbench. I don't know who would have done that. I'm going to figure out who it is and take them out in the parking lot and give them a piece of my mind. Huh. But yeah, that's how it turns out. That should be really good for hanging it. The total weight of this thing completely loaded up. It might be, I don't know, six pounds. If you have like four janitors living in the house, it might get up to 15 pounds. So that should be fine. If you got like four janitors living in the house, maybe maybe go with two of them instead. But yeah, that, that, that should be pretty good. I know you don't see me do this very often, but I'm going to go ahead and stain it. I don't use stain very much. I'm a kind of a natural wood kind of guy. I really like how uh, wood looks naturally, almost no matter what kind of wood it is. But uh, for this project, I'm going to go ahead and stain it. Cover up the natural natural look of this wood with some, some dark walnut stain and see how this goes. Getting into the holes was a little bit of a challenge, but with a little bit of help from some Q-tips, that, that became a pretty easy hurdle to get over. 
Now for the finish, I went with a spray-on Minwax lacquer, and believe it or not, it livened it right up. It was pretty good. And then I had one thing left to do, and that was to put the key hooks in the bottom. So I put some painter's tape across the bottom of it, and that made it easier for me to mark my holes without marking the wood. So I just marked out where the holes were on the painter's tape, then drilled through the painter's tape, and uh, it set my holes in there nice and perfect. When I peeled the painter's tape away, the holes looked good, and they were ready to accept them hooks. And this is how it turned out. I really enjoyed this project, and, and I really like how versatile this project is. You can make this thing look extremely fancy and extremely modern, or you could even go the opposite direction. You can make it look rustic and, and have a bunch of hammer marks all through it. it. It's really versatile. I like it. And if you like this project too, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you want to see more projects like this, hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell to let you know the next time I post a video like this one. But until next time, make something awesome.